View this video from the playlist to see the complete video content. In this chapter, we're going to cover home sewing. You already know that the Ultrafeed sewing machines are excellent for sewing heavy and difficult to manage materials, but they also do a really good job of handling standard home fabrics. And in order to show you how best to set up the machine, I'm going to start by showing you how the machine functions if you leave it set for heavy fabric and then try and sew something light. It's just not going to do it until you make the adjustments that I'm going to show you in this chapter. This is a uh, Riley Blake uh, cotton fabric, and it's, it, it is what you would think of, uh, of somebody who's sewing quilts, for instance. But it's a good example of sort of a normal, light-duty homemaker's fabric. And what I want to do, I'm just going to cut a, a two-layer strip of it. And we're leaving our machine set as it has been up to this point with the uh, uh, V92 thread, number 20 needle, and the tension that we had set for doing uh, our work in the Sunbrella marine grade material. And what I want to show you is if, if you just start to use it like this, you, it will, the machine will sew fine, but the, the thread is so heavy and the needle is so large and the tension is so high on the machine for this type of uh, fabric with this thread combination that you're going to get a puckered mess. So obviously that's not what we want. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to reset the machine for your home sewing. So let's remove this and I'm going to cut off that mess. All right, so we really have to do a number of things, but the very first thing that we need to do is we need to set the proper thread and proper needle. So my V92 thread is going to go away and I'm going to remove our number 20 needle. We are going to switch to a number 12 needle, which would be appropriate for this thread. And again, I've got to get that lined up properly with the groove to the left. Okay. Now, we're going to leave our thread stand, our integrated thread stand, because we're not going to be using that thread stand for home sewing. We're going to be using the spool pin. So I have uh, pulled a, a, a general purpose uh, light thread and a light pink. Um, this is Coates Dual Duty XP general purpose thread. And what we get here instead of a cone is we have a spool. And we want to get the end of the thread and we want this cone, as the, as the thread comes off of it, to spin clockwise, just as I'm turning it here, so that it has the effect of tightening this instead of loosening it, in which case, after a substantial amount of sewing, this might actually come unthreaded. So you always want to make sure your cone spins clockwise. Notice there are no holes in the cone, but there is, a, uh, uh, there is actually a hollow core, so you just need to punch it through the, the uh, paper on the end of the cone and we'll set our cone there. Now we want to go through threading very much the same way that we've shown in the threading process um, in other chapters here. So we're going to cut here, I'm going to thread the machine, we're going to change to an appropriate bobbin, and then we're going to do some sewing and make a few other adjustments. Our thread is changed and the machine is threaded with the appropriate needle in place. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to set tension appropriately. This is a very light thread and a very light fabric that we're going to be working with, so I do not need nearly as much pressure on the presser feet. So I'm actually going to reduce the tension on the presser feet quite dramatically. And there's nothing wrong with spinning this all the way until it actually comes off. And for the light, but hold on to it, don't let it fly because that spring, you see the spring in here? That would allow this to fly off. So I'm holding on to it. I've got it all the way loose. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to thread in about two turns. That's about the lightest tension I can have on the presser feet. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our tension assembly and pull the knob off. This was our setting when we were sewing the heavier canvas. Now I'm going to really back this off. And I'm going to do this with the presser feet down so I can sort of gauge when I have the plates starting to loosen up. So I'm checking to see how much plate tension there is and it's starting to get weaker. Still a little bit of tension there, not a lot. We're going to start right there and see what we get. I'm going to leave the knob off just so you can see those adjustments. So we've adjusted the tension in both spots 
and we've set the proper thread and needle combination. The only thing we haven't adjusted is the bobbin case tension, and I want to talk about that a little bit. Let's say that, that I'm still pulling the knots up to the top with this tension setting, which is essentially our lightest tension setting. And what that means is, is that I don't have any further room for adjustment here. If that ever becomes the case, with, and it can, with really, really light thread, you may need to go down to the bobbin case, and you may need to actually decrease, I'm sorry, increase the tension on the bobbin case by turning this screw clockwise in order to put more tension on this thread so that I need to actually increase to rebalance the tension between the top and the bottom. So it's not something that you typically have to do, and I'm not doing it here, I'm not adjusting it here, I think we'll be fine, but should you run into that situation, you now know that it is possible to create a rebalance between the top and the bottom thread. So let's pick up our lower thread. Okay, the, uh, the other thing that we should discuss is the stitch length before we start to sew. And it is not normal to sew with a six millimeter stitch length in a light fabric like this with a light thread. We would be closer to a four millimeter stitch. So I'm gonna drop our mechanism down, set a shorter stitch length, and then we'll decide by eye whether we've got an appropriate stitch. Trap our threads and start to sew. Now immediately you should see that we are not puckering up like we were uh, with the heavier thread, which is what we want to see. Let's sew a little bit further so I can turn a corner here. Okay, and what we'll notice here, now since this is a pink thread that's matching our fabric pretty well, it's hard to see the knots, but the knot is really right in the center of the fabric where we want it, and we're not getting a lot of tension. So uh, we're not getting over, to, over too much tension. So what I'm showing you here actually is I got, I did pretty well. I got it set just about perfectly. Here in the red, I might be able to see the knots to the top a little bit, so I am gonna turn this down just a hair, but uh, I think we're ready to go. And that's a nice stitch length. That's about a three millimeter stitch length, uh, three to four, and that, that will work very well in this. And you can see that the UltraFeed sewing machine really is just a dream to sew with when it comes to this type of, uh, of a lighter fabric. And we can even, I mean, if you get in, obviously the heavier stuff's not gonna be a problem. Whoop, whoops, oh, don't do that. Notice what I did there. I started to sew with the presser foot up. Not a good idea, um, as that can result in a thread jam. I'm gonna make sure it's cleared just by pulling the material off to the side to make sure that the thread isn't snagged on anything down below. And we're good. So now we're gonna jump up into the four layers and then we'll jump up into the eight layers. But again, the same principle holds. Remember I told you before, when you're setting tension, set it in two layers and that tension set will hold as you jump into more and more layers of the same material with the same thread and needle combination. So as you can see here, these machines really do a fantastic job of home sewing with lighter materials. And our red machine, would do exactly the same thing that you have seen with our blue UltraFeed LSZ1 machine. Both machines are perfectly capable of home sewing.